What's good, Homo Squad? It's your boy, Homo Ziggy. So, we back with another little waste of video. And hey, ain't gonna cap, he's been dropping a lot of videos. And trust me, I wanted to make sure I catch up to each one, but sometimes with me trying to catch up with any other video, whether it be music or comedy or anything like that, sometimes I be forgetting the loop. But Regardless, shout out to the Waster and such. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to him and such. But we got a video that he dropped called The Butterfly Effect That Started Hip Hop's Biggest Beef. And, I'm, and obviously, that's pertaining to Kendrick and Drake and such. Because, and look, I know he's gonna, and even though we all know what started, even though we know how it began, but most of the times we wanted it but I guarantee you people certain people kind of like me are always wondering what actually like cuz I guarantee you, there's like sneak there's always gonna be like sneak dissing when it comes to two rappers beefing but you always wanted to know what actually like what was like the final nail in the coffin shout out to Eminem pertaining like what actually started off hence the butterfly effect and such so let's see what Louis the gotta say so I'm about to check this out make sure you like comment and subscribe 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 follow me on all my socials up there and without further ado let's get into this it only takes one wrong move to reap ma massive consequences even when little decisions seem insignificant this is the idea behind the butterfly effect the theory states that something as simple as a butterfly flapping its wings can cause a massive earthquake somewhere else in the world. This is seen in the world of hip-hop too, where in seconds, the industry can turn on a dime and generate a sea of chaos from one small choice. All this to say, rap's greatest beef in the 21st century, that between Kendrick Lamar and Drake, can be traced back to nothing more than a little dispute, which we'll be talking about today. My name is Luesta, and this is how one tiny mistake started rap's most infamous beef. Let's set our sights on the very beginning, 2002, when both artists were just rap obsessed teens and their feud started with a track from before they even began making music. Cash Money Records and the Neptunes of Star Trek dominated the early 2000s as some of the most exciting artists owned labels in the world. In the case of Birdman's New Orleans based organization, they were selling millions of records thanks to artists like Juvenile, The Big Timers, and a young rapper by the name of Lil Wayne. Weezy was on the brink of breakthrough with his album 500 Degrees, and over time would become a major piece of the beef we'll dissect in this video. Meanwhile, Pharrell and Chad Hugo were transforming hip-hop at Star Trek, the home of a group known as Clips, which included Pusha T and Malice, with sounds that were in high demand. With two buzzing record labels dominating the young game, it was no surprise that Birdman and the Clips' collab on What Happened to That Boy in 2002 had the streets live. What happened to that boy? Boy. And while that excitement lasted for fans, some financial shady- It's so crazy that now with Birdman, they, people are like trolling with Birdman like... Granted, he always wasn't that much of a- Well, it is what it is with Birdman, but people are always trolling that nigga about how he don't be rapping shit. He just be saying and always doing the Birdman hand rubbing such. And I guarantee you, there's a lot of people. I mean, shit, shout out to one person I watched many years ago and such called Mick Ashhole. And he always used to always just do the Birdman calling out and such, like ease and such. Whenever he was imitating other rappers, whenever it came to Birdman, he always did the Birdman hair rub and always calling out what he had and such. And that's literally, to me, how most people think Birdman was and such. But it is what it is, but shout out to Birdman labels dominating the young game, it was no surprise that Birdman and the Clips' collab on What Happened to That Boy in 2002 had the streets live. What happened to that boy? Yeah. What happened to that boy? And while that excitement lasted for fans, some financial shadiness surfaced when Stunna didn't pay Skateboard P for the iconic beat, sprouting a label beef that would last decades. There was a non-payment at this point. And if you look back, Pharrell never worked with a cash money artist after this moment. There's never been a Drake Pharrell collab in any way, huh? I couldn't find one unless I missed one. In light of the song, 
Kong's effect on today's events, fans wonder if Birdman could have prevented history by simply cutting Pete a check. Instead, a generational feud would tear a rift into rap as we know it today. Some have even compared the track's lore to the Gavrilo Princip Franz Ferdinand shooting, which is the murder that sparked the Second World War. But I'm getting ahead of myself, back to the beef. After Birdman refused to pay up, it drove a wedge between Pharrell's camp and Cash Money. <laughs> there has been on record that Birdman do be forgetting to pay certain artists. I mean, hell. For goodness sakes, he forgot to even pay his own damn son Lil Wayne certain shit. So you know that nigga used to always forget to pay his artists or pay other people. Money. One that stretched far beyond music. Even when Pharrell moved into the fashion industry with his billionaire boys club, Wheezy was unable to get a care package and was even ignored when his request went directly to P. I'm told behind the scenes, Lil Wayne used to ask for billionaire boys club gear and was told no. And went and wore it in a video anyway and they was like, yo, we told you basically not to wear our stuff and it was like an issue. So Pharrell did, held on to the fact that he never got paid. Damn. I'm told. Which, by the way, he delivered a huge hit here, so you would understand why. Okay. Yeah, that's petty. To go behind somebody's back to say not to wear it, still wear it, over the fact that you have it over for over a decades now, you still held on to the fact that you didn't get paid from Birdman. Hey, that would be crazy. That's some. That's some. If you don't think that's some petty shit right there, you lying, cause nigga, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm told. Which, by the way, he delivered a huge hit here, so you would understand why. Okay, yeah, I don't know if he got paid half in advance, didn't get to back in, you know how those scenarios work. But anyway, I wanted to point that out because it's important. As petty as it may seem, fashion has always intertwined with hip-hop. And in this rivalry, it would play a major role in setting the scene for Drake to make poor decisions of his own. But before we get there, another instance of Lil Wayne inciting wardrobe warfare came after he wore a Bape hoodie on the cover of Vibe in 2006. You see, this is kind of important because Pharrell and the Clips were pioneers in the brand's popularization. So they took Wayne's move as disrespect and began sending subliminals, like this push a verse on mic check. Four years later admiring the shoes late you late we call you tokyo buffoon but the major escalation is found on the track mr me too the lead single from clips's second record hell hath no fury that accused wheezy and the cash money crew of jacking their style want to know the time better clock us despite the style from the shoes to the watches their digs were pretty direct and it didn't take long for wheezy to respond later that year in a complex interview where he went off in a fit of rage he claimed that the star trek boys needed what happened to that boy to make a name for themselves and demanded that babe wasn't cool until he wore it hmm. pretty bold stuff this public was that's crazy now that's definitely <laughs> that's crazy that you're gonna say that your shit wasn't hot until i wore it that's too hey to me that would be disrespectful to say that my shit ain't hot until when you started wearing it yeah that i would to me I would agree. I would take that as straight up disrespect. You not finna say that my shit ain't hot. My type of clothing ain't hot until you started wearing it. Nah, I don't give a fuck who you is. If I think my shit is hot because my ideas of it is hot. Because I think my ideas of it is hot. Not because your ass is wearing it. I don't give a damn who you is. I wouldn't give a damn. And demanded that Bape wasn't cool until he wore it. That's Pretty bold stuff. This public response cemented the disdain between the two rap crews who'd forever be at odds. Mm. But Pusha's brother Malice claims to this day that Mr. Me Too was never meant to diss Wheezy. I can tell you unequivocally, uh, Mr. Me Too was not about Lil Wayne. At least to my knowledge, I've never heard that. Okay. So th th this was just a rumor that was. I'm talking about in internally. Like, uh, we, internally, we, yeah. we're not even that lame to you know, talk about somebody and, and not say your name. You know what I'm saying? So, absolutely right. not. Before that, you know, I thought everything was cool. You know, us and Baby okay. and, you know, we had went out to New Orleans and shot what happened to that boy. Then the something happened, the cameraman messed up, so messed up the footage. So we went back out because, you know, it was just on the cool. So it was... You know, never any problems with them. This isn't the only alternative viewpoint to the situation either. And if you ask Cash Money's former artist Currency, the whole Bape ordeal was a complete misunderstanding on both sides. I always say Wayne called a bad 
bag with the clips about that. Pusha T was all pissed at him for babing. It's like, I showed the homie babe. He didn't take that from y'all. I was like, yo, he thought I had Converse on in the studio. And I was like, no, and showed him on the computer what they were. Then he proceeded to flex a little Wayne wallet and buy the whole website on me. But, you know, it's all good. Unfortunately, platforms like Say Cheese weren't around at the time for rappers to break these things down. So the rumor mill would instead cause the beef to reach a boiling point. And after that interview, Pusha and Malice stayed on Wheezy's neck in their own exchanges. For example, when they were asked about Wayne's self-proclamation as the greatest living rapper, hmm. they had some choice words. They accused Tucci of kissing men, stealing swag, copying Jay-Z. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember there were certain, I remember many times, I've always heard about how with the whole Wayne, and I even remember there was like this video of, that you saw instantly about how Wayne and Birdman kissing each other and such. Sometimes, look, as much as I like certain things in hip hop, sometimes you need to stop showing up. This is what happens when sometimes you don't always got to show everything around social media not even just for hip-hop just anything in general because you because then you're gonna have certain shit like this some choice words Hold up. they accuse two because then you're gonna have certain shit like this that's gonna be showing around and such especially if you're in hip-hop because you don't want to be saying you claim the greatest living rapper and such when then people have shit like this to back you up on granted hey Live your life how, how you want, but let's be honest, hip-hop were always talking about how it's have this like homophobic type thing and such, and <laughs> all I'm going to say is this, for me, y'all cannot be and crazy enough, right? People want to say about how hip-hop don't like gay people or whatever and such like that. When nigga, nine times out of ten, there be certain lines and hell, certain things like this, for example. This could probably be doctrinating. I don't know. But then you got certain shit in hip hop where, I don't know, it looks suspicious. Not even just in lyrics, just in general. But hey, to each his own, I guess. In self-proclamation as I the greatest living the rapper, music. they had some choice words. They accused Tucci of kissing men, stealing swag, copying Jay-Z, dealing c dressing like cult leader Jim Jones, and much more accusations that came with a lot of weight. And while the beef may have simmered after this exchange, it wouldn't be long before the flames erupted once again at the hand of the Neptunes fanboy who signed with Cash Money Records, but not before copying an autograph mic to pretend he was Pusha T in the mirror. One day I was looking for like autograph stuff from clips because I was like a really, really big clips fan. Some search words led me to this guy in Virginia that a, a microphone that Pusha T used during the show. It was like plastic, but it had his autograph on it. I used to pretend I was doing interviews on the red carpet and uh, perform all the clip songs in my basement with the mic. At the time, it meant the world to me. Though. Aubrey Graham signed to Young Money in 2009 after making waves in the underground with some critically acclaimed mixtapes and was only a few steps away from becoming the household name that we all know today as Drake. While inking with the NOLA label, there was no clause indicating inheritance of his rivalries, but he still took it upon himself to stand on the label's business, which would become an error that he would never be able to rewrite. But until this L emerged from the shadows, the former Degrassi child star experienced one of hip-hop's fastest booms into stardom, thanks to projects like So Far Gone, Take Care, and others. Meanwhile, Pusha T followed clips into hiatus, and would even sign over with Kanye West at Good Music. Despite the new label, his bad blood with Cash Money hadn't gone anywhere. This fight fuels his return on the track Don't F*** With Me, where he jacked the beat from Drake's Dreams Money Can Buy and took some clear shot at Cash Money's newest stars. Rappers only sophomores acting like they boss lords. Fame such a funny thing for sure. When start believing all them encores. At the time, Drake seemed to take Pusha's advice and didn't reply. But when he didn't get a response, Pusha kept applying pressure to the Cash crew on 2012's Exodus. He signed a one the sign of another nigga, the sign of three nigga. Now that's bad luck. Here, Pusha takes a jab at Drake for only getting a small percentage of the money he was making. And if that line rings a bell, it's cause Kendrick borrowed it all these years later on the song Euphoria. You were signed to a nigga that signed to a nigga that said he was signed to that nigga. Hey. That's it. Crazy enough that them two niggas 
<laughs> great great minds think alike huh <laughs> on the song euphoria he was signed to a nip that signed to a nip that said he was signed to that before he could defend himself, his protege stepped in on Twitter, keeping things simple and direct. Pusha T and anyone that loves him. And soon after, he followed this tweet up with a song called Goalish, a diss track that started with the same line. But Pusha T was not impressed with this attempt at his head, to say the least. When you heard, um, what was your opinion of Wayne's response? It was horrible. It was horrible. Damn. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was trash. It, was, it wasn't great. Good. Yeah, it wasn't good. Like, in all honesty, man, I, I haven't said anything about it because I never, I didn't think it was like good enough to respond to. It was from this moment on that fans were absolutely itching for a head to head between the rising star Drake and the clips legend Pusha T. With every. D damn! The hell? What the hell? What the hell is going on here? itching for a head-to-head -head between the rising star Drake and the clips legend Pusha T, with everyone taking their bets on how it would play out. As we know now, we would eventually get what we were hoping for, but not just yet. A lot went into building up to the story of Adidon, one of the most infamous diss tracks in hip-hop history. Yep. First, Drake formally entered the battle with Tuscan Leather on 2013's Nothing Was The Same, where he stood up for Wheezy and warned Pusha not to take things further. I'm just as famous as my mentor, but that's still the boss, don't get sent for. Get hype on tracks and jump in front of a bullet you wasn't meant for. Of course, this merited a response from Push on the track. It's so crazy that this nigga, you gonna have the the nerve of Drake to say somebody that should that, sorry, the nerve of Drake to say that you should never try to push this to the line, push this to something that you don't want it, the, basically not to cross a line. Damn, shit. Sometimes with me, it takes me a while to get to my point. But basically, where it, the nerve of Drake to say you don't push a line and such, with nigga. What you what you did on Pusha T and with Kendrick, <laughs> the nerve of him to say he don't want to take it to a certain place that there's no return, <laughs> nigga. Look what you did. In front of a bullet, you wasn't there for. Of course, this merited a response from Push on the track Suicide, where he let Drake know that his issues with Wayne came first, but that he'd happily take on anyone associated with the label. I can't see the scenes that you mirror in your idol, but a pawn's only purpose is completely suicide. It seemed like Pusha would have the last laugh here as the beef went cold until 2016, when a few more lines from the Clips member dropped only a couple months after Drake's heated beef with Meek Mill. That exchange brought Drake's ghostwriting allegations hey, to life. Hey, shout out to RDC. <laughs> I know them too. And Push decided to give his thoughts on rappers who don't craft their yeah, own. Louis, I see you. You, I get, I see that. You, I see that little RDC clip. You, you a fan with them, huh? Hey, Louis, if you see this, don't think you slick, boy. I know that. I know those two from anywhere. <laughs> That's that RDC world clip and such. So shade. Shout out to you watching RDC. Drake's ghostwriting allegations to light, if and Push decided to give his thoughts on rappers who don't craft their own rhymes on HD TV freestyle. It's too far gone when the realest ain't real. I walk amongst the clouds so your ceilings ain't real. These call it duty cause they feelings ain't real. Feeling hot after washing me, it didn't take long for Drake to respond with Two Birds One Stone, which featured his most direct hits at Pusha yet. He called T a fake gangster who lied about drug dealing and called him the middleman in this entire situation. Honestly, it seems like Drake is the true middleman here, but yeah, we'll like, let that slide. At this point, it's one crazy that how this nigga is only this beef was between Wayne and sorry, between Wayne and Pusher. Why the hell is you involved, nigga? I get it, you're the protege, but if he's not but if he wasn't this well he did say earlier that he was calling out <laughs> names and such. Well, at the start, but still, if it was only between him, if it was only between Wayne and Pusher, let it be between Wayne and Pusher. Don't get involved. That's how I look at it. If a beef is, if a beef is between this nigga and this nigga, I'm not getting myself involved. Even if I'm friends with one of them, hey, their business is their business. I ain't got to be involved in it. Honestly, it seems like Drake is the Even if one of them is my homie and all, my bro and all, Still, at the end of the day, whatever beef they have, whatever beef he has, that's between him and that nigga. Whatever beef I have is between me and that nigga. But then again, if anyhow I was getting involved in it, then I'll see it. 
So in a way, I guess that's why since Push is saying about how you were signed to a nigga, and then Kendrick said later on in years, you were signed to a nigga that was signed to a nigga that was signed to a nigga and such. So I get it. Now looking at it, I can totally get it. Middleman here, but we'll let that slide. At this point, one thing was for certain. Every ounce of that Pusha T fanboy and Drake had vanished. Yep. And a 14 year old feud between Cash Money and Star Trek had boiled to this exact moment. Drake and Pusha were on a collision course, which would not only unfold a major revelation, but played an instrumental role to Kendrick's master plan of taking down BBL Drizzy. If only Bird paid up all those years ago. Crazy. The end game of the song. Pusha T and Drake beef all started on Pusha's Ye produced track, Infrared, where he brought back the ghostwriting allegations with the simple line, it was written from Nas, but it came from Quentin. That same day, Drake that pulled was up. Mistaken. Wasn't that the ghostwriter? Yeah, how... I remember reacting to his like Lil Wasters like how Drake ruined this Ghost Rider's life and such, basically ruined Quint Quentin Miller. Yeah. Uh, meet the Grams with his Duppy freestyle, where he revealed that Kanye had employed his services for ghostwriting during the Wyoming album stretch, saying, Father had to stretch his hands out and get it for me. What most people don't know is that this included Pusha's own Daytona album, but we'll never know if Drake actually wrote for that one. Regardless, he had plenty of words for Push. Somebody piss Drake off! While he's in album mode. Push your T. Did you see this coming? Did you plan for this? The track was littered with typical rap beef scolds, but Drizzy may have crossed the line where he brought family into the mix. Upon mention. See what I mean? Like, nigga. How you gonna tell somebody not to push the line and such when you yourself is literally gonna put. freaking bring family into this? Like. That's what I was saying earlier. Like, Drake has the nerve to say about how he shouldn't, a certain person should not cross that line and such. When nigga, you literally crossed the line. Rap beef scolds, but Drizzy may have crossed the line where he brought family into the mix. Upon mention of Push's fiance, Virginia Williams, T was free to get the gloves off. Somehow, Drake never learned his lesson here, and as we've seen in his beef with Kendrick, when you bring family into the mix, prepare for things to get messy. Exactly. But we all know what happened next. The story of added on drops, with Pusha not only outing Drake's past of wearing blackface while discussing his biracial identity, but also revealing that Drake had a son that he hadn't yet made public. Let me keep with the facts. You are hiding a child. Let that boy come home. Dead beat mother playing border patrol. Hey, shout out to No Life Chat. Crazy, that's how No Life Chat used to look in 2018. Mind you, that song came out in 2018 and niggas was going crazy and such. Yo, Drake and Dan be in the same minute I found out he had a baby. To say that this line did critical damage would be an understatement. Not only did it sink Drake's plan to unveil his son as part of an Adidas campaign, it effectively ended his partnership with them. The worst blow would ultimately be that the world now saw him as a terrible father. You would think unveiling your kid for a brand deal would have the same effect though. Lose lose situation for real. Who rolled out that child with a sweat Like get out of here, what are you doing? Yeah, that, will, that is kind of weird. So. Yeah, that would be that would be mad to me. That is mad crazy. You gonna reveal your child through a brand deal, nigga? That means that cause me, nobody would ever want to. I don't give a damn what kind of artist you are. Who reveals their child through a goddamn brand deal? If you don't want you, it's basically like this for me. If I'm in, like I said, if I'm in a beef with somebody, I'm between that person, right? But the one thing I'm not gonna do is bring other motherfuckers into this shit that is not even involved, especially family. Yeah, this is why Drake never learned his lesson. He didn't learn his lesson then, and he damn sure to in the beef with him and Kendrick, he didn't learn it today. He didn't learn it then, and he damn well didn't learn it now. Terrible father. You would think unveiling your kid for a brand deal would have the same effect, though. Lose lose situation for real. Who rolled out that child with a sweat suit? Like, get out of here. What are you doing? 
I didn't understand that line. Explain that Adidas situation. See, the Adidas situation is this. The child uh, allegedly his new line on Adidas is called Adidon, oh. which is named after Adonis, his son. But we couldn't know about the, you. We couldn't know about your child until you start selling sweatsuits and sneakers. Fans were yeah. quick to point out how vicious this comeback was all over the internet, and he still never lived this one down, honestly. Pusha T continued to break down his process and methods of the diss in several interviews, calling Drizzy out for his broken father-son relationship, his silence on black issues, and much, much more. Now I gotta dig deeper into who the person is. Now I gotta dig in and see, what do y'all like? What's your family like? Oh, your dad left you at five. Oh, I get that. You, He never walked you to the bus stop. You're mad about this. You, you parade your dad around in these weird suits. You parade him. It's clown-like. I get clown feelings from that. You are silent in all black issues. I don't hear about anything. You have all the platform in the world. You were so passionate back then. No, you weren't. Pusha was also the first to point out the holes in Drake's circle. Many people assumed Kanye was the whistleblower on Adonis, but Pusha claims it was none other than Drake's right-hand man and producer, 40 Shabit. Mm. 40 is sleeping with a woman. He talks to her daily, five, six hours a day. Ultimately, speaks about how he's disgruntled about certain things with that also came the fact that drake has a child with that also came the 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 uh the trip that everybody took to go see the child and bring them gifts and all of, you know, all of this information she divulged this information. This would ultimately be the model of investigation that Kendrick Lamar would also emulate in 2024, even taking it a bit further by anticipating Drake's moves based on past beefs. And people still can't believe that history has repeated itself. Hinting towards crazy. We would never, th it's basically like this. We would never think that we got a, not to say it's a Pusha T versus Drake part two and such, but I feel like with this one, it's basically like this. You know what? Let me save my initial thoughts. Hope I hopefully I can remember it. But yeah. But all I'm Kendrick's say, claims. But all I'm gonna say is this was way more. To be honest, let me say it right now. Let me say it right now before I even forget. Even though the beef with Pusha and Drake, that was a certain crazy thing. To me, this one obviously, obviously by the title. This one triumphs it because nigga, I have never. Cause when that initial one came about with Pusha T and Drake, sure people was getting crazy at Drake and such. But let's face it, he moved on since then and still became this and that and third, right? But with this one, with him and Kendrick, let's be honest. This one definitely made a permanent. Like, just mm, in such cuz let's be honest certain times when you hear but then again I'm hearing just like these drop he dropped like a hundred gigabytes of unreleased songs and all but let me just say this for the time being let's be honest before he dropped that Drake sh nobody was even interested in people are looking at Drake a certain type of way now especially with the whole PDF files and such, and then with the whole history with Drake being with grown with underage women. I'm just allegedly being with underage women and such. Hey, cause I I get it with with Pusha T. He was being more strategic with his shit, but Kendrick say nah, fuck that. We gonna make sure you never ever try to. Do this again. <laughs> Pusher was like, let me break it down for you real quick. While Kendrick, he was saying, mm, mm, you gonna do it not to do this shit ever again. <laughs> that's how that's how I look at it. Pusher was more of like teaching you a lesson. <laughs> Kendrick was more like making sure you get the point across. 
4. Even taking it a bit further by anticipating Drake's moves based on past beefs. And people still can't believe that history has repeated itself. Hinting towards Kendrick's claims that someone in his camp was working for him. The point is, the story of Adidon was a blow from which Drake couldn't recover. He had no choice but to concede to this L he had taken. I tip my hat to the chess move. I mean, it was a genius. It was a genius play in the game of chess and definitely you know, warranted my first loss in the competitive sport of, of rapping. By choice, obviously, because I, 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 I bowed out after realizing like the gap between us allowed him to drop a bomb on the world that really became, it, that was all that was, that was was all anyone cared about. Like what we saw on the hard part six, he tried to move on and, and even claimed Jay Prince stopped him from dropping another disc because yeah. it was supposedly going too far. What yeah, allegedly where I heard say about how if it wasn't for Jay Prince, we would apparently he was gonna drop another diss track on Pusha T about how it was gonna, like you heard Louis to say, go too far. It was gonna be this astronomical. I mean, what, what, how more personal can you get when you brought up somebody's family into this? <laughs> how more, how more out of line he was gonna get? We would never know if it wasn't for Jay Prince. Jay Prince stopped him from dropping another disc because it was supposedly going too far. What I think is where you, where they think that you went too far. I don't care. Was I don't care. Oh, there is no too far. <laughs> I don't play like that. That's why you don't play with me. Right. There is no too far. Right. It's not. Forever. Is, is there any Leave time? Leave me alone. Leave me be because there is no too far. Right. That's how it goes. You felt like you went too far? Uh, who, me? There's no too far. Right. Absolutely. Right. Promise you. And anybody who ever told me that I was... That I went too far, I never spoke to him again. <laughs> <laughs> However, it hasn't stopped him from throwing subliminals. Speaking of which, Pusha still relishes these subs to this day, saying that it lets him know how deeply he hurt Drake in their beef. It would be a while before Kendrick would I mean, utilize- think about it. Ever since when he said about how he had a son and such, and then with the black face, and then with the with his fam with Drake's family issues about him being biracial and such. Think about it. If it wasn't for Pusha T, we would have never known about Ad Adonis. Let's be honest right there. Hell, for me, well. Honest, but honestly to God, we would have never thought about Drake even being biracial. We would just think he's just light skin, like brown skin and such. But we would have never thought Drake was biracial. We would have never thought he did blackface. And we would have never thought he had a kid. And now with Kendrick doing... In a way, the exact same thing, but adding on new things to it. Allegedly by Kendrick in, what was it, Meet the Grams? He has a daughter. <laughs> Allegedly. Now, if that is true, we still don't know. But if it is true, nigga. <laughs> you didn't learn your lesson the first time with Pusha T. Now you know. All I'm gonna say is, nigga, stop getting, stop it. He didn't let us listen. It's all of this weaponry laid out by Pusha, as it wasn't quite his turn. Despite working together on Nostalgia, the two weren't all that close. However, it was his ties to another Star Trek boy that would fuel Kendrick's desire to take down Drake once and for all. Although he still had no love for cash money, Pharrell always insisted he wasn't in favor of what happened between Pusha and Drake. Pusha didn't tell me because he knows I would have, you know, stood in front of him as much as I could. But he's a different kind of person. He's a Taurus. You know what I'm saying? And when you feel like a line is crossed and you take off the gloves, that's just where your brain is at. You know? Look, respects to Pharrell. I, but y'all even heard, y'all heard me before with this damn Zodiac sign things. I don't give a damn what your sign is. A Taurus, a Cancer, nigga. Nope, I wouldn't care what your zodiac sign is. Once you put, in common sense, people should know that if you cross a certain line of something, I don't give a damn who your signs, what your sign is. Everybody knows that once you push a line, you're gone too far, and people are gonna react or are gonna react, no matter what your zodiac sign is. Simple as that. Stood in front of him That's as much me. as I could, but he's a different kind of person. He's a Taurus. 
You know what I'm saying? And when you feel like a line is crossed and you take off the gloves, that's just where your brain is at. You know what I'm saying? Touching on the roots of their beef with the what happened to that boy, Pharrell said he wished none of that would have happened because he would have liked to have seen them all work together. He even dropped a shocker by leaking the respect that Pusha has for Drake behind the curtains. It still breaks my heart to this day because I would have loved to have heard those guys on a song together or heard a joint project together. I would have loved to have seen that. By the way, Pusha says Drake got bars. When Drake makes something that's amazing, we talk about it all the time when something's up. It's amazing. Known as one of the most level-headed hip-hop personnel, Pharrell seemed eager to keep the peace, but he later learned that he should have been in Pusha's corner after all. In 2022, it was revealed that Drake had copped some of Pharrell's most iconic chains, even rocking them in music videos in what seemed like a respectful homage. But all of that was thrown out the window the following year when he admitted to destroying the legendary pieces on Travis Scott's meltdown. I melt down the chains that I bought from your boss, give a f about all of that heritage sh Drake even took shots at his new position as the creative head at Louis Vuitton, stating his refusal to wear the brand after Virgil's passing. Letting off what seemed like an unprovoked attack at Pharrell, it seemed like Drake's issues came with Pusha T appearing in Pharrell's first Louis show. In taking shots at Pharrell, Drake dissed a real legend and pioneer in the game. Because of P's status, it was a move that even Drake fans didn't appreciate. But more devastatingly, he gave Kendrick Lamar even more reason to start the problem that he'd been itching to for years now. Because if you don't no, Skateboard P has been a mentor to Kada since the Section 80 days. All that jazz that you're having in your music, that's the man. Do not lose. Who's the producers? I'm from you, let me know man. A working relationship that has led to tracks like Good Kid, Mr. Morale, and All Right, Pharrell has always been quick to give Kada his flowers. Kendrick is one of the greatest writers of our time. And he's a great writer because he knows how to be very disciplined with a subject matter. He knows that stickiness is important and he knows that it's has to feel great. It's unclear if Drake's verse on Meltdown was the last straw, or simply one of the many factors gradually fueling his disdain for the Six God. But he directly references the Pharrell dissing on Euphoria. I don't like you popping that Pharrell for him. I am the beef. You fuck on that pushing pee. Let me see push you push push Not gonna lie, that line was kind of hard. And he's not only mm, nigga. What? Mm, let me see if you push your T. Mm, come on now. That one is. It's so crazy that. It's so cr even though that all of Kendrick's like this is at all of his this song at Drake was fire. It's so crazy that not like us was the final nail in that coffin that everybody does. It's called the song of the summer and everybody's bumping that shit. <laughs> but nigga, Euphoria, nigga, you cannot get like that shit was. That's the shit that really kickstarted this whole entire thing. That started off the fire songs and such from Kendrick. To for me. If you push your tea, push your tea. Not gonna lie, that line was kinda hard. And he's not only referencing two legends who both had bad blood with cash money over the what happened to that boy, but straight up says that he's inheriting the beef. Say this that, is nigga, all the proof I'm... we need to confirm that this beef is the domino effect of that small mistake. A buildup of multiple decades worth of turmoil, diss tracks, and bad blood. Like Pusha and Wayne all those years ago, the same sides continued to send new soldiers into the mm. battle, all over a financial wrong. That's crazy. Only That's the crazy. ammunition has evolved from fashion to federal crime. Above all, this situation just goes on to show that much of what happens in rap can be traced back and connected to the genre's earliest days. Now, we just have to wait and see what comes next. Hey man, shout out to the Waster man. But hold on, let me... Yeah, yeah, as you see, I already gave it a like. But hold up, man. All I can say is, my nigga, you need to tell me that after all of this... You need to tell me, sir, that this whole entire thing started off because of a whole, because of Birdman not paying up Pharrell for a certain fashion line or clothing or whatever. But that's just crazy of how hip hop is and such. That just shows you how with certain beefs in hip hop, that's how long a beef can last or keep on going, keep going to be. Because the fact that it started from Birdman to Pharrell, then it went from Birdman to Pharrell, to Lil Wayne and Pusha T, then to Kendrick and Drake. That's a whole entire, at least, 
decades apart from one particular beef starting transitioning into different sections of that beef. Hey man, that just goes to show you sometimes if anyhow you was promised something, pay up. Simple as that. Because I remember seeing a line where, y'all not seen the screen now, but I see a line, the first line here, it says, crazy how, crazy how all of this happened because Berman just didn't want to pay Pharrell. And that's how most beef be now. That's how most beef be starting. It be starting some else, but majority of the time, it be starting off with somebody not paying off, paying somebody up what they were promised. That's crazy. But hey, shout out to Lil Waste, a great video, man. I'm going to make sure I check out more of his and such, so be on the lookout. But y'all let me know what y'all thought about this down in the comments below. It's been your boy Humble Ziggy signing out. Stay positive and keep the vibes up. I'm out.